So here we are. We're going to find the indefinite integral. This is what our job is here today. <coughs> an integral, an indefinite integral answers the question, if the derivative is this thing, what must the function have been? So we spent half a year saying, if f of x is this, then what's its slope? What's its derivative given x? Now we're going to do that backwards. So if you... Hopefully what you'll see start to happen around us is you'll see all these rules start to happen backwards. And you'll say, hey, that's exactly like we did it before, except for in reverse. We decremented exponents by 1 when we are differentiating. Now we're going to increase them by 1. We multiplied by the original exponent. Then we're going to now, that's when we differentiate, now we're going to divide by it to undo what we did. See if it makes any sense to you. So here's the first one. And it asks us, what's the antiderivative of the quantity 5 minus x dx? I look at this 5, and I see this negative x here. And if this had been the original function, I would have used the sum and difference rule. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this into its parts. And the first part I'm going to take is I'm going to take the antiderivative of 5 with respect to x. And then I'm going to take this negative sign right here. And then I'm going to say minus, so this negative sign here is this negative sign right here minus the antiderivative of x with respect to x. And then I'm just going to take my time and do this one thing at a time. One thing I'm going to do before I do my rewrite is I'm going to back this 5 out because it's a constant multiplier, isn't it? And if you look up your rule for how a constant multiplier works, if you take the derivative of, I don't know, like 5x squared, you pull the 5 out if you wanted to, couldn't you? And just take the derivative of this part, which would be 2x, isn't that right? And then multiply them, and you'd get your 10x as your derivative. So I'm doing the same thing. That same rule applies. So I'm just pulling that out. cleans it up a little bit for me. So it would look like this. A dx. Now that gets a little bit weird looking for me. So what I try to remind myself here, I'll write it in the darkest color possible so you can barely see it, is that this is x to the 0 power, isn't it? Okay. So that's x to the 0 power. And x to the 0 power is just 1, but it gives me something to think about. And then I'm just going to rewrite this the antiderivative of x with respect to x. Now I'm going to start to integrate. So first I did my rewrite. So first we re we did our rewrite. So the process seems to be rewrite. Second step, so one. Two, the second step is integrate. And then we'll go from there. So I'm going to start integrating this. So that would give me this 5 right here, 5 times x to the right 0 but remember it wasn't always 0 it was 1 higher than that so 0 plus 1 is 1 over 1 minus this is x to the 1 now so now it's going to be x to the 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 this is the undoing of the power rule right so if you think about it it actually is this it's x to the as a general rule it's x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. You might want to stop for a second and write this down. This is the for the power rule. So look at it for a second. 5 times x is 5x. This would be minus x squared over 2, right? And remember, it's plus c, that c value, because there may have been a constant out there like 17 or pi or negative 32 ninths. And if there was, then the derivative of that certainly would have been zero, right? So there's that. So I believe that our original function was this. Our original function was this. How could I test that? Well, test that by differentiating this and see if you get your same piece back. So let's call this thing f of x and say, okay, we have this f of x, and we've decided that our f of x is 5x minus and if you don't mind, I'm going to do it this way because it's easier for me to see. I see this this way in my head. I see this is 1 over 2 here. Hopefully you can see that. So 1 half, right, x squared. So look at uh, this for a second and see if that doesn't work. That we would, if we are going to take f prime at this now. So I'm just proving that that we took this antiderivative carefully by re by taking the derivative again and the first derivative of this so ddx of this plus ddx of that well the first derivative of 5x is just 5 isn't it and the first derivative here is this 2 
times this negative 1 is negative 2 over 2, right? Which is negative 1. And then we decrement this exponent here. So 2 minus 1 is 1. 5 minus x. So what does that mean to us? Well, this 5 minus x right here is this. Remember that the question we're asking is, if, if the derivative was this, what must the function have been? So here's that 5 minus x here. And come on. And here's that 5 minus x again. So we took the antiderivative here. We went through our steps, right? We broke this out. We integrated all the way through here. We came and we said, we think that if the derivative was this, this must have been, this is one of the uh, antiderivatives here. It's a, of a family because this value could be anything. So we don't know what that is unless we're asked for a specific uh, for a particular solution, they'd have to provide us with an x and y value. So here we are. So here's our proof. So we check it and we realize that this is a good answer. I'm going to do one more. I hope this is helpful. Uh, keep it up. I'm going to try to do uh, examples breaking down different rules and how would you partition it off. So how can you look at this in different ways? So uh, please watch the videos. Take uh, meticulous notes. We're moving on, you guys, to area. And you got to be good at this. So...